Today I want to share with you guys a new tank we just set up for some really cool native Keeley fish that I actually caught in the wild here in Florida with some friends and I'm actually hoping to get them to breed. The bluefin Keeley fish. It's a true Keeley fish and like I said it's native here to Florida in the southeast United States. Um, it can now be found uh, in California, Texas, and uh, North and South Carolina, I believe, uh, because it was you know introduced there. Uh, but it's definitely native here to Florida. Uh, I got a group of about, uh, I think there's nine or so in here. And there's a few males, a few females. They're pretty easy to tell the difference. Um, they're, the females pretty much have no color whatsoever. Uh, the males are gonna have some of this red and then uh, blue, this bright blue in their fins as well, especially when they are uh, nice and happy. And uh, I'm going to feed them here some, uh, some California blackworms and show you guys that. They introduced to the aquarium uh, fairly well. And I want to make sure that you guys, if you go out and you collect wild fish, uh, make sure that you have the proper license, make sure it's, it's legal, um, you know, make sure you have a good spot for them. I had this uh, well-established tank. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you know that I used to have uh, some pea puffers in here. Um, they're now in a tank down here doing just fine. But uh, I moved the, the bluefin killie fish into here. I spoke with a, a local fish friend of mine, David. Big shout out to David. Um, he has kept these in the past, so he kind of uh, gave me some pointers on you know, how to keep them, what I'll need, the fact that they'll like you know, kind of a well-established planted tank. The fact that they're gonna want live foods, um, they really like the fact that this tank's got, you know, like I said, plenty of plant coverage. The entire top is pretty much duckweed and frog bit, and then there's plenty of hornwort throughout. Um, there's a spoing mop in there. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, and then they'll also eat um, in the wild. They'll eat kind of small crustaceans and stuff. So there was already, you know, a healthy population of these ram's horn snails breeding in here. So hopefully these uh, Keeley fish will be, you know, snacking on the very tiny, tiny uh, ram's horns. But I have been feeding them mostly the California blackworms because I do have a culture of that. And they, um, I fed rapashi, and they were actually a big fan of rapashi food. Um, I've also tried, you know, some flake and some small foods. Um, and they really haven't uh, taken to it especially, but I haven't tried. Um, I'm, I'm sure that if I, you know, starve them for a few days and then try one of those foods, they might, you know, come around to it. But that's not my goal. My goal is to um, try to breed these guys. Um, once again, you know, talking to my uh, local fish friend, David, you know, these guys are true Keeley fish, unlike some other fish that I've collected here. Um, there's some least keely fish down here. Um, least keely fish are actually, uh, you know, a live bear. They're not actually a true keely fish. Um, but these bluefin keely fish are a true keely fish. Uh, they're not like an annual uh, keely fish where they, you know, they only have a, you know, a year life cycle. They will live up to about two years. Um, what you're seeing is about max size. You know, they're about, you know, an inch and a half, I want to say. Um, they should be, you know, two inches. Um, but they, they will lay eggs, you know, in spawning mops, and that's why, well, not in nature, they'll lay, they'll lay eggs in, in vegetation. Um, so I have the spawning mop in there to hopefully entice them to, uh, to lay it there. And as you'll see as I put the black worms into the water here, they really like to get fed and get nice and fattened up. They are not shy fish at feeding time, um, but even, even at non-feeding time, they are, you know, they're pretty active. Once, you know, a day or so in the tank, they were, you know, come to greet me. Um, so they're pretty active, boisterous fish once they get settled in a day or two into the tank. And especially at feeding time, as you can see, they're kind of just um, not shy at all, willing to just come in here and chow down. For a native fish, you know, a lot of color. Um, you know, a lot of times you, you think of native fish, you don't think of much color. You know, you don't think of much of anything much personality in my opinion these guys got a lot of personality they got color especially when the males really flash and you know it's really cool to kind of have caught these you know in the wild 
and the fact that we could potentially breed them is another just kind of cool aspect to the whole, you know, I don't know, just uh, the aura of wanting to keep them. So they've been a really uh, fun native fish to keep. Um, I've got a few other species, like I talked about, there's the, the least killy fish down there. I'll also have some self and mollies, and maybe I'll do some videos on those in the future, and maybe talk about some more um, native fish as I, you know, expand my collection, because I feel like that's something that I'm, I'm going to do, is expand uh, and collect more and more. Uh, the next video after this one, planning to come out, is going to be another collecting video that, you know, I did with my, my friends here locally a few weeks back. So as we do more and more of those, and, you know, I, we find more and more fish that are out in the wild. Uh, literally, you know, I don't know, three, four, five months ago, I didn't even know this fish existed. Um, and now it's, you know, one of my, you know, favorite fish. You know, obviously people have, you know, what's the flavor of the week in terms of fish. But, you know, the fact that it's here, you know, in the fish cave, and I'm really, you know, getting a lot of enjoyment out of this species in particular is really neat. Um, and I feel like the fact that, you know, it's wild here in my backyard and I, you know, along with my friends were able to go out and collect these, it was, it was pretty neat. When Corey from Aquarium Co-op was in town, we actually, you know, caught a few of these. So some of these are from, um, from that collection as well. Um, so it was just pretty neat to know kind of the, you know, the effort, you know, the group effort that kind of went into collecting these also. That just makes it even, you know, that much more special. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to know, you know, as I talk about, you know, collecting fish out there, do you guys collect any native fish? I know that there's a few uh, viewers out there um, that are involved with uh, the NANFA, which is a, the North American Native Fish Association. Yeah, wow, I got that. I wasn't expecting to get that on the first try. But um, <laughs> NANFA is a, an, an organization out there that I hope to familiarize myself with a little more. But if any of you guys out there, whether you're here in North America or especially if you're overseas, um, different countries, let me know uh, if you guys keep any native fish to where you're at. You know, is it legal? Um, you know, what kind of potentially uh, permits and stuff do you need? Um, you definitely need a few things here in Florida. It's not too crazy. It's not too expensive. Um, but you definitely want to, you know, look into that. But I'm um, curious. Let me know, you know in the comments below. Is there any species that you have um, heard about that you haven't kept yet? I know one that I'm looking to find in the wild. Well, I'll, I'll mention two that I'm looking to find in the wild. One is the Florida flagfish, which I know that uh, Jay over at uh, Aquafunk, he's got a few. I don't know if he caught them in the wild or not, but it's still pretty cool. And I think he's been breeding them or he's trying to breed them. So I think it'd be cool to try to catch my own wild Florida flagfish and maybe try my hand at breeding those. And then also, same thing with the uh, pygmy sunfish. There's a few different variants out there, but in general there's like a wild uh, pygmy sunfish down here in Florida that kind of has this black and blue uh, coloration. I think it's uh, Evergladii is the name of the species. But um, that's another fish that is kind of on my, my bucket list to catch here in Florida and lucky for me you know there's just a ton of different species out there and you know right now I've got three or four and these these happen to be happen to be my favorite um, if you have any experience with these fish in particular I'd be uh, curious curious to know um, like I said I've been doing some research and I know that you know they said they're they're pretty hardy fish um, they definitely love the live foods. I'm pretty confident, and I'm going to try in the future to adjust them to some flake food. Um, but right now, like I said, I really kind of want to hit them hard with these uh, live foods to keep them, you know, get them nice and fat, and hopefully, you know, get them to breed. Um, but I'd be curious to know, you know what, what, um, you know, what success or failures you may have had with these fish or just uh, native fish in general. Um, another thing in terms of, you know, quarantine, um, I took the pea puffers out of this tank before I introduced the bluefin keelyfish. That way I didn't have any issues with having to, you know, quarantine these fish or um, deworm them. Now, keep in mind, you still may, it still is a good idea to 
probably monitor and potentially deworm native fish, even if they're in their own tank, because, like I said, that's just going to be detrimental to them long term. Um, but you know, I didn't, I didn't, have, I didn't hit them with any kind of medication. Uh, I wasn't worried about them spreading diseases to other fish because there was no other fish in this tank. I appreciate you guys watching, especially to the end. As always, stay positive and stay passionate.